it's on to dessert. Chocolate tort. Jamie blitzes some biscuits, adds butter and prods it in a tin. So chocolate tort, I'm guessing it's like a posh tart. <laughs> Maybe. Sounds French. Help us out, Julie. Chocolate tort is almost like a... Not a cheesecake, but it's almost like a moussey kind of cake thing. Thanks for that. For that moussey type of cake thing, he crushes chocolate, melts sugar and water, chucks in an egg and folds into whipped cream. So far, I'm impressed. Nice. Try to resist... Uh, well, that didn't last long. Mmm, yummy. So, uh, tonight's entertainment is going to be a disco with a twist. Oh! OK. It's going to be a silent disco. Oh, my gosh! I've always wanted to do that. It is so much fun! <laughs> Thank you, Jamie, for letting me do my first silent disco. You might regret saying that. Well, isn't this nice? Maybe you have to be there. Is it me or is it getting hot in here? Oh, Jamie, you were doing so well. <laughs> Not player bombing this one, Maz. We've seen a whole different side to Jamie and we've seen the big Raj side. He's the guy that at the family wedding gets his top off and scares all the grannies. He's that guy. I love that. I think it's great. Whatever floats your boat. Oh, my gosh, what on earth is happening? When Jamie stripped down to his tighty white ears, I just thought, thank goodness, this morning was laundry day. So whenever I hear a certain song, I have to strip off. <laughs> and when I went on, I just went crazy. Jamie, I need to take you to church. Wait for him to put his clothes back on. I think I scored an extra point. that started with Aloha with the prayer, but I think I've now lost it with the stripping. Yes, you might be right there. One last chance to get those points back up. He slices his chocolate pud and decorates with strawberries and icing sugar. Last dish of the night, Jamie's chocolate tort. Ooh. Wow. I love it. Phew! Thank you. Redeemed yourself there. Jamie, this is absolutely gorgeous. It's so silky smooth. Has anyone got any party tricks? <laughs> I may have one. I can um, do Donald Duck. It's really scary. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> oh, no. oh, taxis! Dark chocolate is not my favourite. So, taste wise, it just didn't hit the mark that I needed it to. The tort, which I now know means like a bit of a pie. <laughs> Thing. Um, it was delicious. It was soft. It was smooth. It was thick. It was creamy. It was. It was delicious. I think I've edged out in front. I'm the one to beat. I think it was brilliant. I had a great time until he stripped. <sighs> so I'm gonna give him an eight. Tonight I'm giving Jamie an eight. Tonight I'm gonna give Jamie a seven. Tonight was awesome because he had a sophisticated menu but sleazy entertainment. So I'm going to give him a 10. Boom! It's still not enough, though. His naughty antics have cost him too many points. With 33, he's currently in second place behind Julie. For dessert, Kev's attempting Millie's malted milk cheesecake. It's the battle of the cheesecakes in Burnley. I do like cheesecake. Mmm, looks a great menu. Another popular choice, Kev. To make the base, he melts butter. I'm very nervous about doing this. It's looking like it's got chilli flakes in it, so I'm going to start again. <laughs> Always wash your pans before you begin. He's learning fast. Kev starts again, adding sugar and malted biscuits to the non-chilli flaked butter before moving on to the filling. Can't quite remember how much I'm going to put the oil in. It doesn't seem to matter. Kev's making two layers for his cheesecake, one with white chocolate, the other with milk chocolate. Very fancy. Let's see what that tastes like. Verdict? Perfect. Smashing. Finally, he places one chocolate layer on top of the other and chills. I would never, ever put food on a coloured plate. And Kev used red plates. Well, bad luck, cos he's serving dessert on some, too. 
Presentation is key to this dish. And as you can see, I'm making a balls up of it. Yes. Half a jeans is in mark. Get off there. I'll that bit of that. Well saved, Kev. Here it is, Millie's malted cheesecake with a side order of giant cutlery. Big spoon. That's a serving spoon, Kev. Yeah, I know. The only ones that are clean. Well, that's a good reason. Would you like a little spoon? <laughs> I'll get you a little spoon. No, it's all right. Is he just saying that you've got a big gob? Steady. Just tell me what you think of it. I'll be interested to know. A spoon's big enough. Oh, nearly took half of it with me. You needed a big spoon to get down. I should have put a chisel on. Oh, that's good, isn't mm, it? It is, actually. Kev, I don't really like malt biscuits. Oh. Really? So don't be offended if I don't eat it all. No. So what didn't you like? You could always add your top bigger. There she goes. Yeah. Taxi! This week we're in Sussex, childhood home of DD Motormouth Piers Morgan. Nothing to say, Piers. Well, that makes a pleasant change. Hoping to get a word in edgeways with her guests is today's host, marketing manager and part-time spiritual guru, Josie. Looks like the buses are on strike, then. <laughs> like all our competitors this week, Josie will be cooking and throwing her dinner party in this swanky pad. It's posh, isn't it? I am a bit nervous about cooking in a different kitchen. I live in a very tiny cottage, and this is enormous. It's as exciting as it is worrying. Joining pet psychic Josie is her cat, Mimi. She's at home today, but with her in spirit. I can feel Mimi judging right now. Mimi judges everybody. Sounds like she's got catitude. <laughs> Get it, Mimi? No? Please yourself. So, feeling confident? I think my night has the look of the universe behind it. So, what's everyone expecting from Josie tonight? I've no idea what she's going to be presenting, so the menu reveal will be interesting. I'm expecting a sophisticated menu. I'm guessing she's not a culinary goddess. What have you got planned, then? My evening tonight is mystical, magical, spooky and surprising. Ooh! Josie's kicking off her tarot card-themed menu with a vegan-friendly dessert. The Fool! A blackberry fool with a lavender and rose petal biscuit. The Fool. <laughs> I hope she's not talking about me. Sticking with my forest foraging Wiccan pagan theme, I've foraged for blackberries myself many times. Didn't think you could forage in a supermarket. This sounds very nice. I love fruit. You're not the only one. Mmm. 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 I just can't stop eating them. Yes, we noticed. To what's left, Josie adds lemon juice and rind. Oh, this is great. Oh, I see what you did there. See, I'm funnier than Rod. A fool is quite an easy skill level to, to make. It is, if you can work the cooker. Uh, this is a bit of a problem. <laughs> Look at all these buttons. <laughs> oh, dear. Have a word, Mimi. Cooker soused, eventually. The fruit is stewed, ready for adding to cream later. Smells just like blackberries. <laughs> Funny, that. Biscuits are next. This is edible lavender, so if you don't like lavender, you're going to have a really horrible dessert. Great! I'm, ha I'm happy with that in a, in a meal. Yay! I just think flowers and food, I don't really like it. Oh, dear. Oh! <laughs> is there a problem? <laughs> it says 175 grams of butter, and I've just put 175 grams of lavender sugar, which is a lot of lavender. Yes, Mimi, it is a disaster already. <laughs> Take two. Vegan butter is mixed with the right amount of lavender sugar and rose petals. Anything else? <laughs> Where's the flour? <laughs> In the packet! <laughs> Take three, and eventually the biscuits are in to bake. I think fool is made with cream, if I'm not wrong. Um, so maybe it will be made with vegan cream. Spot on, Rodders. All I have to do is whip the cream. What could possibly go wrong? I wouldn't tempt fate if I were you. Oh. No, whoopsie. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh, no. Mimi's all creamy. Next up, the starter. Hanged man go. Avocado and king prawn salad with sweet chilli sauce. 
I'll be very impressed if somebody understands what a hanged mango starter is. It sounds like a pun, but I can't work out what a pun is yet. Sounds a bit Pirates of the Caribbean, doesn't it? I think you better explain, Josie. The Hanged Man tarot card is all about seeing things from a completely different perspective. The Hanged Man has just got all the time in the world hanging upside down. And when he's hanging upside down, he's looking for enlightenment. And often it's only by seeing things the opposite way to how you have been seeing things that you find the answer, the enlightenment that you were looking for. What? All that in a salad? Is it just like a posh name and all she's going to do is, like, chop some stuff up and slap it on a plate? Yeah, kind of. But she's making her own sweet chilli sauce with white wine vinegar, fish sauce, ginger and loads of sugar. I'm trying to sweeten up my guests. And rot their teeth at the same time. For non-meat eaters, Josie bungs in tofu to marinate for frying tonight. Hand mango. There's no mango there, though. Is there mango? Worry not, Rod. There will be. As well as avocado and prawns, all prepped and cooked fresh later. Last up, the main spectral sticky beef noodles. Me. Mm. OK. You know, a bit basic. Sticky beef noodles, a dinner I do quite often because I'm always on the go working and it's something you can do quick and easily. Do you know what? I don't know whether I've encountered a sticky sauce in my life. Well, tonight's the night. Josie combines Worcestershire and soy sauces with chilli flakes, honey and ginger. I love ginger. Oh, and me. I was gutted when she left the Spice Girls. And that's it. Happy with that? Oh, my God. They're going to hate it. Well, it might improve when it's reduced and mixed in with that juicy beef before serving. Josie's also doing a mystical mushroom version for the non-meat eaters. Mystical? Doesn't sound mystical. I'm going to cook with bee-free honey and I don't know what it tastes like, so I think I ought to just try a little bit. Good plan. And? It doesn't taste like honey. What does it taste like, then? It's quite revolting. And yet you're still using it. OK. So that's all I can do. Let's hope I can bewitch my guests tonight with my lovely food and my radiant personality. Not sure Mimi's buying it. Just the pud to go. Oh, good, Bill. Go on, no pressure. Go on. Da -da, da -da 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 -da. Is that soundtrack helping, Justine? Jen, get out of my ear Sorry. now. A drizzle of raspberry coolie, a snifter of limoncello lemon liqueur to top it off, and there it is, lemon and ginger cheese cake. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Hopefully you're enjoying this. <laughs> I will. Oh, I love Lovely. Perfect. Oh, good. Really tasty. One of the nicest cheesecakes I've had in a long time. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Beautiful. I've done a good job here. <laughs> <laughs> so far, so good, but Leanne's still to go. I've really, really enjoyed everything about it. Oh. Um, you've done fantastic. Oh, thanks, Leanne. That's lovely. Oh, don't you make me want to cry. No, she likes it. Time to throw back a limoncello in celebration. That tastes like toilet cleaner. <laughs> That shot was oh. disgusting. Right, Can I just sort myself out for one second? Because <laughs> I may need to be sick. Taxi! The cheesecake was good, but the lemon liqueur was like bleach and made it awful. I thought the cheesecake was the best part of the meal. Yeah, me. absolutely, absolutely. Well done, babe. You've done amazing. Yeah, I know. Been brilliant night. You've, you've, you've done really good too, babe. Pat on the back then. Thank you. High five. Well. Let's go to bed. Yeah. Oh. The starter and main weren't fantastic. But they were the greatest hosts. So for that, we're going to give Justine and Jim a, a 14. 14. So tonight, we're giving Justine and Jim a, a 15. 15. It's night one in and around Bournemouth, where aesthetic practitioner Shika is hoping her authentic Indian banquet will bag her the big bucks. Cheers, everyone! Cheers. First impressions, very, very good. Lovely crowd. Everyone's so well dressed as well. And um, oh my god, they just seem so nice. I think I think it'd be a good week. Glad you're enjoying it. While Sheikha cracks on with the cooking, Ed and Sarah take a cruise round her clinic. Ooh, look at this. What is this place? Well, I'm guessing that's a dental extraction chair. Mm. Reminds me of a dentist anyway. Yeah. 
Uh, Shika is registered as a pharmacist. Wow. Facial contouring. I'm not like, actually sure what that is. Is that getting rid of all your lines? I don't know. What else has she got? Hybrid, Hybrid Russian, Russian lips. lips. That's got to be plumped up lips. Yeah. We ended up in Shika's, I uh, want to say, beauty room, possible torture chamber, not entirely sure. Could well be Dr. Evil's den in the garden. Is there anything you want to tell me, Sarah? I think I need some Russian lips. You want some hybrid Russian lips? I really do. While Sarah and Ed talk treatments, Shika plates up her chicken with Indian salad and a dollop of yoghurt. I haven't gone too heavy with the starter because I want them to be still wanting their main. And here it is, tandoori chicken with Indian salad and a vegetable pakora for Andy. Oh, mate, that's delicious. Honestly, I think it could have been spicier. Maybe some chilli sauce with that would have been good, but I really enjoyed it. What do you think? I think it's great. Is this mango inside the...? Yes. I love it. Mango is one of my favourite yeah. fruits. Salad was incredible. Tandoori chicken... I wasn't really that impressed, honestly. The yoghurt was yummy. And, like, all in, all in all, it was, like, OK. And, Ed, what do you think of the food? It's just a really nice dish. Oh, good. I'm really pleased you're enjoying it. Yeah, now I'm nervous. I <laughs> know. <laughs> <laughs> the presentation was fantastic. And, unfortunately, now I understand that I'm in a competition, right? So, if I'm going to be brutally honest, the chicken was maybe a little bit dry. It was just too dry for me, I have to say. The chicken was just a little bit dry for me. I hope it's not too spicy for everybody. Oh, I love not spice. at all. I love it. Indian food's difficult to do when you don't know the people. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, then yeah, you don't exactly. know sort of how, what temperature to gauge. So I was going more for kind of flavoursome yeah. rather than kind of going think, too I hot. I think flavour's more important than heat. I'd like a little more heat, but mm. I think it's fabulous. So one thing we went when, when we went into your little room out there is the fact that you do Russian lips. Do you want to explain that? Because is that like plumped up lips or is that... What, what yeah. is Russian lips? So I'm a pharmacist, but I also practise aesthetics. And with aesthetics, I do do a lot of lip fillers. But Russian lips are lips that are essentially about the volume and the definition. How, yeah. am, I, how am I doing? Do I need any? <laughs> if it doesn't bother you, don't do it. It doesn't bother you. Oh. <laughs> then don't do it. <laughs> There's no improving perfection, Andy. W would you ever consider doing something like that? I have to say no. I've already done it. I, I really wouldn't. <laughs> Me too. Well, Bestie! I, hold on. <laughs> What, what, I've done what, lips? Uh, no, not lips. So I have my smile lines done uh, around about every five or six months. Smile. And then uh, these lines here, you know, when you smile here. Oh, I've no. got them. I've got them. Nose so to mouth. So I've had these gotten rid of. And then also, if you look at um, underneath my eyes, yeah. I have like a little, a little bag, I suppose. I thought you were just tired. Uh, oh. No, it's, <laughs> I got them injected. <laughs> oh. Yeah, these things here. Un like when I smile, it kind of like. Comes oh out a little bit, so I had those injected. Why would Why? you do that? Because I think they're cute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Botox and stuff does not appeal to me personally. Um, <clears throat> but good for them. I mean, two of them around the table today have had, had it done, so good for them for doing it. But I'm afraid it's not for me. So I'll tell you guys something about myself. Um, I actually used to be a semi pro boxer. Wow. So what made you stop? I had a baby. Oh, oh, that, that, makes sense. that will do. That will do. Can I ask you, how, how did you get into uh, boxing? Yeah. Do you know, I did boxing with a personal trainer, and I just got really into it. It's the best thing when you go to boxing. You meet so many nice people, and you become like a little clan. So yeah. nice people that hit each other in yeah, the face. Yeah, exactly. Literally. Wow. She goes a boxer. Semi-professional. I don't even know what semi-professional means. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done boxing. Look at my face. Shocker. How does she look like that? How does she look like that and be a professional boxer? Anyone else got any secret hobbies or anything unusual? I'm a campanologist. Oh, what? what is that? I know what that is. Yeah. Ooh. That's ringing bells. It is indeed. Yeah. Ooh. Hey, that's one of my hobbies. That's yeah, amazing. so I'm the one pulling the Sally. Is that what it's called, the big it, the big rope thing? The red, white and blue thing yeah. is called the Sally. Oh. You've got I, it with both hands and pull. I've <laughs> never pulled the Sally. <laughs> Maybe you should try. Mm, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good for her. That's a fantastic skill to have. She can ring my bell.
When you turn around and say to people, I'm a campanologist, everybody goes, oh, you go camping. <laughs> and you're like, no, actually, really? that's not what I am. Do you know, I heard that before when I'm, I said I was a pharmacist and someone went, oh, so do you just really like farms? <laughs> and I was like, no. <laughs> I can imagine that. <laughs> that is a new one on me.